Today we'll be discussing one of the most notorious and well-publicized catfishing schemes in internet history. In the United States, college American football is often celebrated with just as much fanfare as the National League. In many cases, audiences have a closer attachment because the teams represent familiar local institutions. And given that it's a developmental stage, it's more exciting, with the best given an opportunity to ascend to the professional level. But most importantly, it's in this world that today's story takes place, with the humble beginnings of one team teenager. Born and raised in the Pacific Island state of Hawaii, Manti Teo was the embodiment of everything to love about the sport. He was hardworking, charismatic, but most importantly, extremely skilled. By the time he graduated high school in 2008, the linebacker had cemented himself as one of the highest regarded athletes in the state, and that reputation would only improve after enrolling into the University of Notre Dame. Manti entered his freshman year as a five-star recruit, and by his senior performed so well that he was voted the second most outstanding player in college football. The local hero became a national star, as the world's eyes laid upon him as one of the most promising of his class. Unfortunately, as we'll soon find out, things were not all sunshine and roses as first thought. In the fall of 2009, Manti was said to have met a female student named Lene Kekua after a game at Stanford. The two quickly hit it off, sparking a romance that many described as straight out of a fairy tale. By the next spring, the couple was flirting publicly on social media and calling each other every night. But then, in the midst of their young love, Lene was diagnosed with leukemia. And unfortunately, her condition only worsened as the relationship continued. By September of 2012, Manti would lose two of the closest people in his life. The first was his grandmother, who after years of suffering from long-term illnesses, passed away in the late hours of the 11th. Then Manti received a call from his girlfriend, cryptically stating that she'd always be there for him. Two hours later, he was frantically phoned by her brother, who informed Manti that she'd passed away. The two deaths occurred less than six hours apart. In spite of this string of tragedies, Manti didn't miss a single day of practice that week, even turning down a coach's offer to be excused. He had promised Lene that if she died, he'd honor her memory on the field. On the exact day of her funeral, Notre Dame was scheduled to play against Michigan. Michigan State. Mr. Teo finished with an outstanding performance, recording 12 tackles in total, pivotal moves that enabled his team to win 22-3. The defensive player made such a name for himself that match, he became a top draft pick for the NFL. Exhausted, in the post-game interview, Manti thanked his late grandmother and girlfriend for being with him in spirit. Manti, this must be a bittersweet night. Emotional week, losing your grandmother and your girlfriend on Tuesday. How would you describe your emotions on the field tonight? I mean, they were with me, you know, so. I mean, I couldn't do it without them. I couldn't do it without the support of my family and my girlfriend's family. And uh, I'm just, I'm so grateful for, you know, all the love and the support that all the fans, both Michigan State, and, and Notre Dame and you know, fans around the world. The tale of Manti's persistence in spite of personal trauma was both heartbreaking and inspirational, causing fans to rally behind him to express both sympathy and admiration. At the same time, however, others suspected it to be a little too perfect of a narrative, and in light of the national attention, it began to investigate more critically. What they uncovered would end up sparking one of the greatest debacles in sports history. Things would start to go awry in January of 2013, when Deadspin published an article alleging the star's inspirational tale of adversity to be fabricated. Though his grandmother did indeed pass, they found no death records for any person with the name Lene Marie Kekua. Contrary to reports of a supposed funeral, no obituary was uncovered either. These immediate inconsistencies soon led the journalists down a rabbit hole in which they scrutinized every single detail of the supposed love story. Piecing together excerpts from interviews and social media, they created a timeline of how Manti had described the relationship. As mentioned before, he claimed the two met one fateful night at Stanford in 2009. 
Deadspin found no record of any student under that name attending the university. Instead, they found the couple's first known point of contact to actually have been over Twitter. Manti's earliest confirmed interaction with Lene occurred on October 10th, 2011, in which he replied to her stating, Nice to meet you too, ma'am. Despite claiming that she had visited a handful of times, they deduced the two had never met in person. Manti also said their bond developed primarily through frequent late-night calls. He described these conversations as lasting upwards of eight hours on average, with the couple falling asleep and waking up together over the phone. They weren't able to verify these claims to any capacity. As the story goes, a tragedy struck in June when the mystery woman was supposedly put in near-fatal condition after a serious car accident. While she survived, it was during her recovery that doctors discovered the cancer. Less than three months later, the faux Stanford graduate would pass away, causing a wave of grief across the college football world. By this point, one thing had become clear to the reporters. Lene Kekua never existed. But if that were the case, then who was the person seen in their banner and profile picture? Well, the culprits had taken extensive measures to prevent sleuths from reverse searching the images. Each was modified just enough so they couldn't be reverse searched. It took time, but they were eventually able to unearth the source, finding them to have been lifted from a private social media account. Not just anybody could get these images, so this revelation narrowed down the list of potential suspects substantially. They contacted the woman that was being used as the front of the catfish to inquire about Lene's now deactivated Twitter profile. Startled, she agreed to speak to Deadspin, though asked to remain anonymous. In the account's banner, an image could be seen of Lene holding a piece of paper with the letters MSMK written on it. She informed the authors that the photo had only been sent once, directly to a former high school classmate at their request. It was with that that the authors knew they had finally found their culprit, and soon enough, the world would know who was behind one of the highest profile catfish accounts of all time. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. It's a new year, which means a new you. Feeling your best starts with looking your best, which is why my friends at Manscaped are hooking you up with all the right tools and formulations designed specifically for men. There's a lot to fall in love with at Manscaped.com, including the Performance Package 4.0, your all-in-one head-to-toe men's grooming and hygiene kit. While there's a lot to unpack here, I think the highlight of this entire package is the Lawnmower 4.0 Cordless Water proof body trimmer. Yes, it's great for beard maintenance, but this trimmer is also specifically designed with advanced skin safe technology. And for a limited time when you buy this package, you'll also get two free gifts, the shed travel bag and the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. Don't wait, go to manscaped.com and use promo code MARS to get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts. After some rigorous investigative work, the journalists were getting close to finding out who Lene was, talking directly with the woman used in the pictures who knew the culprit behind the catfish. It turns out his name was Renaya Tuia Sasopo a 20-year-old musician from California who, surprisingly, was a public acquaintance of Manti. The two interacted with each other frequently on social media, with the star athlete even wishing him a happy birthday. The men were so close that Renaya even reportedly appeared on field during one of Notre Dame's games that November. Unclear as to their relationship, the journalists attempted to contact both Renaya and Manti for clarification, only to receive no word back. Immediately, the article was a bombshell, as fans deliberated over the slew of unanswered questions left in the wake of its release. The same day that the story was published, Notre Dame issued a statement affirming that Manti had been the victim of what appeared to be a hoax. They claimed he only learned the truth a month prior, and immediately went to the university for help. 
The school's administration did end up launching their own investigation, hiring private detectives to uncover as much as they could. It was then that Manti finally admitted the relationship had been exclusively on the World Wide Web, and told them what he now claimed to be the actual story of how they met. Contrary to the fairy tale esque meeting at Stanford, the couple actually connected over Facebook. Lene had randomly sent him a friend request, which he accepted and initiated conversation. The two quickly became close friends, and by 2010 were calling regularly over the phone. Just a year later, they were fully committed to being in a long-distance relationship. When questioned why he lied about having met her in person, Manti explained he feared others, including his own family and friends, would judge him for e-dating. And besides, he assumed it wouldn't be an issue for long anyways, as he planned to fly out and meet her that April. Unfortunately, these plans never came to fruition due to Lene supposedly getting hit by a drunk driver before dying dying of cancer. It's likely those excuses were made in fear that a meetup would expose the truth. A question raised in the Deadspin article was how Renaya and the star athlete knew each other. Well, according to Manti, the catfisher also played the role of Lene's other family members, introducing himself personally as her cousin. He also voiced her brother when desperately telling Manti she'd passed away. The star athlete mourned the loss of his ex, but naturally tried to move on. Two months after her funeral, he began dating a woman named Alex Piller. Interestingly, several of Lene's supposed relatives then began messaging Mr. Teo to warn him that Alex was a gold digger. Crazily, the fictional Kakua family continued to remain present in his life, with Renaya being brought onto the field as part of a remembrance for Lene. Of course, in maintaining so many profiles, it was inevitable that things began falling apart. On November 4th, a profile claiming to be Lene's sister was registered on Twitter. Manti interacted with the account frequently, even promoting it to his audience. The thing was, Renaya did a poor job obfuscating its profile picture, leading a suspicious fan to uncover the woman's actual identity. Almost immediately after being called out, the account was deleted. Renaya was getting caught in his own web of lies, and running out of ideas to keep contact with the football player going. Eventually, he decided to jump the shark completely. On the 6th of December, Lene spontaneously called Manti to inform him that she had faked her own death, and had actually been alive the entire time. He at first became furious, demanding she explain herself, before calming down and speaking extensively with her once more. He recounted, Then she came up with this, No, the Lene you know is the real Lene and that's me. I said, well, prove it to me. I said, Skype me, FaceTime me. And she did the same thing. We would FaceTime and she'd say, I can see you. How come you can't see me? I said, I can't see you. I see a black screen. So I figured, okay, this FaceTime thing ain't working. So I told her, okay, take another picture. And this time I want you to hold a paper up with your initials, MSMK, which is her initials, the date and you throwing up the sign. After the insanity reached these comical levels, the star athlete finally came clean about it having been an exclusively online relationship to his family. And right after Christmas, they approached the school's administrators for help. Only somehow Manti still believed she was real, and asked for help dealing with the quote-unquote hoax of Lene faking her death. He only learned the full truth hours before the public did, after Renaya phoned him to come clean. And that is the official timeline of events, according to Manti, painting the image of a naive but well-meaning man led astray by a social media manipulator. It makes enough sense, though it's worth noting that much of it was never substantiated to the public, relying on only Manti's word. Because of this, there was still much doubt over if he was being honest. This is when the public began conceiving alternative explanations to the story that they felt made more sense. Theory number one, Manti knew. 
Just over an hour after Notre Dame's press release, Manti published his own statement that read, This is incredibly embarrassing to talk about, but I developed an emotional relationship with a woman I met online. To think that I shared with them my happiness about my relationship and details that I thought to be true about her just makes me sick. While some were sympathetic, others turned to ridicule. This included the creation of a meme called Teoing, in which users photographed themselves posing with imaginary girlfriends. All joking aside, most were curious as to how oblivious the linebacker actually was, with many calling foul on his supposed victimhood. After all, the relationship lasted for years, meaning Renaya either had to have been very clever or Teo extremely naive. This group of truthers included the catfisher's own family and friends. During Deadspin's investigation, they discovered that, surprisingly, all were aware Renaya was behind the fake profile. But even more eye-opening was the testimony of one friend who stated they were 80% sure Manti was in on it. They believed it had been mutually conceived as a publicity stunt. Journalists also alleged that Manti's narrative was false, including the couple's free frequent late night phone calls. This, if true, contradicts his claims of having communicated frequently with Lene online and on the phone. After all, it would have taken an exorbitant amount of effort for Renaya to achieve such a stunt. As for why Manti asked the university for help, the hoax had already begun falling apart on Twitter by this point, and perhaps he felt it could serve as some form of alibi. There were many possible motives as to why Manti would have orchestrated this. As suggested before, it gave him a sympathetic backstory that propelled him to the top of headlines. But others turn to a more salacious narrative, that it may have been done to disguise that the linebacker was gay. In an interview, former NFL quarterback Jim Miller once stated that due to the prevalence of religion, an openly homosexual player likely wouldn't be accepted by his peers. On top of that, Manti came from a Mormon family whose church has a strong standard of morality. Could it be possible that the star athlete was in the closet and due to fear of being outed made the Lene character to protect his secret? And perhaps in needing it to appear more realistic, asked for the help of a close male friend. One must question why Manti would turn to e-dating in the first place. He was a local hero and viewed extremely well by the student body at large. Why would he turn to an online relationship? This line of questioning was asked to him directly in a subsequent interview with Katie Couric, to which he responded rather bluntly. One of the theories, many theories, Manti making the rounds, is somehow you created this whole scenario to cover up your sexual orientation. Are you gay? No, far from it. This Lene person, there are so many similarities. She was Polynesian, supposedly. She is Samoan. I'm Samoan. She loved her faith, and she knew a lot about, you know, I'm, I'm Mormon, and she knew a lot about that. I found a lot of, you know, peace and a lot of comfort in being able to talk to somebody, and they knew my standards, they knew my culture, they knew what is expected of me, and I knew what's expected of her. While the idea that it was all a facade to mask his orientation seemed rather plausible at the time, with Manti getting married to a real-life woman in recent years, it became substantially less possible. Theory number two, Lene knew. One major source of doubt in Manti's recount is his claim that the two had spoken for hours every night for three years straight. If true, this meant he would have a familiar understanding of Lene's voice, yet somehow was unable to distinguish it from Renaya's. While Deadspin made the implication that he made up this aspect entirely, he eventually dispelled those claims by releasing a handful of voicemails he'd received during the relationship. Hey babe, I'm just calling to say goodnight. I love you. I know that you're probably doing homework or you're with the boys or grabbing me. What a fatty. 
Indeed, the voice heard does sound like that of a female, and if genuine, made it more clear how Manti became so thoroughly convinced. However, this raised the new question of how the effect was achieved, with many believing it indicated the existence of a female co-conspirator. In light of the scandal's publicity, the previously anonymous face of Lene ended up appearing on television, identifying herself as Diane O'Mara. Commenters quickly pointed out that her voice sounded eerily similar to the one heard in the recordings, with one even speculating that she was in on the whole catfishing, but once S hit the fan, she started pretending like she didn't know a thing. Could it have been possible that Diane hadn't actually been tricked, but was a willing participant all along? The biggest point against this theory is the lack of motivation. If Diane wanted to mislead an athlete, why would she continue to use actual photos of herself? Wouldn't that have defeated the purpose of catfishing? And on top of this, she wasn't the only person suspected of having played Lene. Remember that Renaya had wrapped several family members into the scheme. During his on-field appearance, the catfisher even brought a nine-year-old sibling to pose as Lene's younger cousin. Well, after the release of the voicemails, it was argued that the person heard was most likely related to the culprit. Eventually, one began to stand out compared to the others, specifically Tino, a female cousin in her mid-twenties who once aspired to be an actor. This suspect was put forth by Renaya's own relatives, who upon hearing the messages immediately recognized her voice. One stated to a news outlet, Tino is the girl that Manti has been talking to all these months. There is no doubt whatsoever that it's Tino. Even more suspicious, her own father declined to deny the allegations when asked, simply stating that he didn't want to divulge anything. While no hard proof of her involvement ever surfaced, all the circumstantial evidence seemed to point to Tino, or at least some member of the family having involvement. But this is where the biggest twist would be revealed, when the catfisher himself appeared on Dr. Phil. The host asked Renaya to prove he was behind the voicemails. Shockingly, he did so in the most straightforward way possible, demonstrating it live, though not on camera. Hey, babe. Um, I'm just calling to say goodnight, and I love you. As you can see, it was indeed possible for Renaya to do the voice himself, with some attributing the ability to his musical background. This put the theory mostly to rest, though even with vocal training, it would have been grating to perform it daily for three years. Because of this, it's possible he may have had the assistance of another conspirator, with one family member continuing to insist Tino became involved around 2011. They allege she left a long-distance relationship at the time and participated as an outlet. Unfortunately, whether or not others were involved in Teo's gaslighting is a question that to this day remains an internet mystery. Theory number three, Renaya is gay. It was in the aforementioned interview with Dr. Phil that we'd finally get to hear Renaya's perspective. He mentioned before that Manti genuinely felt a strong connection with Lene, identifying with her beliefs, values, and personality. Well, it was here that we learned the catfishers did too, with Renaya outing himself as a quote-unquote recovering homosexual. When asked if he was gay, he responded that, If you look at this situation and everything that I've been through, I would say, yeah, I'm gay. He admitted to having deep romantic feelings for the football player, and hadn't fabricated their chemistry. And that was that. The release of this interview seemed to quell the rampant theory crafting for the most part, answering many of the most pressing questions left in the mind of onlookers. To this day, some still hypothesize that Renaya may have been a fall guy, be it for Tino or even Manti. But the evidence for the most part points to the football player's innocence as there was far more manipulation than first thought. At the time, this controversy was a massive stain on Manti's once spotless reputation. He was eventually able to recover though, being drafted second round into the NFL a few months later. 
As of the time of writing, he still plays in the professional league. To this day, he denies any involvement in orchestrating the hoax. During a recent interview he did with ESPN, he reflected on the controversy stating, It was a very dark time for me after the catfishing. I had a lot of trouble and difficulty processing it. I look back on that kid and I shed tears. Since it's been a decade since the story first broke, I think we'll now have to face that we will never get clear answers of what really happened with this story. And with that thought, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.